You know what? I want to talk about something that I noticed. Um, it's unfortunate uh, with a lot of Africans that um, come here to America. And in many cases, it's really difficult for them to try to develop some type of relationship with so-called Black Americans. There are Africans that do want to bond with Black Americans. They want to fellowship with so-called Black Americans. But in many cases, I think that they really don't know how. It's interesting that Black Americans and Africans both feel that neither one likes each other. Black Americans think that Africans don't like them, and there's Africans that feel that Black Americans don't like them. So now that it appears to be this, this, this feud or this war between the so-called Black Americans and the Africans from the continent. You know, I've met Africans that were nice. The ones that I've met so far, I can say are quite nice. You know, these are some very nice people. It's, they're easy to get along with in many cases. But because of things that these Africans may experience here in America with Black Americans, it puts a sour taste in their mouth. Like I've heard Africans talk about how, you know, Black Americans will call them names, especially their kids in school. But my thoughts are like this, man. It's like when it comes to bullying, everybody's bullied. At some point in time in your life, in your childhood, you are going to be bullied. Even the bully is going to be bullied. And in many cases, a bully becomes a bully because he was bullied at some point in time in his life. So that either, either makes you or breaks you and in, in, in some odd, crazy way, in a way that kind of bonds you. You know, it's like a white person that move into the hood and he's white or white. He whitey white, white, white. Suburban white, just a straight white dude. If you didn't know him, you would think that he's a redneck because he's so white. But he move into a black neighborhood. Or better yet, he get with the brothers in school and as time go on, you start, he has to go through his own personal trials because they're going to punk him. You know, they're going to test his strength. You know, he may get beat up a couple of times. He may be called out of his name, racial names and whatnot. But I've seen cases where white dudes fought back and because he had heart, he gained the respect of the black community. He might have gotten his behind whoop, but he got respect because he showed that he wasn't a punk. He fought back. Look at Eminem. Look at all these so-called white rappers. You know, look at these white females that get with the sisters, they get with the brothers. And I'm going to tell you something, too. Some of the most dangerous <laughs> hood dudes are white dudes that grew up in the hood. Because they proved themselves, man. They were bullied, but they endured. They didn't run and tuck their tail between their legs and, and talk about how I used to be bullied and they called me this, they called me that. No, they proved themselves. And because they were able to do that, they kind of engrafted themselves into that environment. So this white dude and white females that can go in just about any black hood and fit right in. You know, because they became a part of that hood, that environment. See, so with the Africans, man, yeah, they may call you African booty scratchers. They may, um, and I'm going to tell you something, too. A lot of Africans are offended when you have Black Americans that ignorantly ask if they live in huts. Do you have Wi-Fi? Do you guys have electricity? Yeah, it may seem ignorant to you. It may seem stupid to you. But you got to understand what we've seen all our lives on television or television was that Africans lived in huts. They lived in the jungle. 
They had spears in their hand chasing down lions, right? This is what we saw. You know, we saw Tarzan swinging through the jungles, you know, and all the Africans were like the servants of Tarzan. We saw little kids, man, with, with uh, bloated stomachs and flies all around them. They're hungry and they got huts behind them. And the mom sitting there with uh, sagging breasts and feeding the child. And this is the image that we grew up seeing on television until you have Black Americans now starting to visit the motherland. They started visiting Africa. And we started learning that that's not how it is. So when you, there's a lot of Black Americans that haven't been out of the country. So when you get those kind of questions, it's not that they're being disrespectful to you, right? Or talking down to you. In many cases, they really want to know. You know, do you guys live in the jungle? Do you live in huts? Do you have big bellies with flies and women uh, got baskets on their heads? You know? So, but I think that in my main point of this video, was that I walked inside the store. Now, I really don't support these Arab corner stores. I really don't. Um, but every now and then there's like a certain store I would go into because they have these, these little Debbie donuts that I like. They're the only ones that seem to have them, you know? So I go in there and buy the whole box. So this one store I walked into is usually Arabs because usually the Arabs, you know, the Indians own the stores, the Indians own the gas stations and stuff like that, right? But I walked in there and there was always some Arab dudes walked in there. So I was in the depression that Arabs own that store, the Middle Eastern dudes. So one time I walked in, I saw this African, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. In my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, he must be a worker behind there, you know? Because, you know, usually Arabs and Africans, they pretty tight. People from overseas, they pretty tight, right? So this African dude was there. And every time I go in there, this African dude, I only seen him twice, okay? The first time I saw him, you know, I went in there to get the donuts, put them on the counter, and he was glaring at me. It's some big yellow, and he's like darker than this, this thing right here, right? And he, he's genuine black. Right. I'm brown, but this dude is genu genuinely black. And all I saw was them big yellow eyes glaring at me. Something like, man, what this dude looking at? OK, he must be a worker there. So the next time I went in there, the African dude was behind the counter. He was sitting back there, but the Arab dudes was like taking the money. And so when I got this big box, I, I bought the whole I bought all of them. You know, so I said, I know you're giving me giving me a, a, a discount on this. Right. And the Arab dude laughed and he turned around to the African dude and says, you're going to give him a discount on this. And the African dude said, yes, he's glaring at me with these big yellow eyes. And he said, yeah, something like, oh, OK. Come to find out the African dude owned the store. So that made me think, like, why do you feel that you have to hire Arabs to run your business, to get businesses? to get business in the so-called black community because he's set up in the hood. Is it because they're insecure and didn't think that black Americans would support them like they do the Arabs, right? And it's crazy, man, that Africans that come here that start a business have to put someone in the front to run their business because they don't have a relationship with the so-called black community. The Arabs, they paid their dues. I mean, these Arabs, they fought. I've seen fights. They had to fight with you. Their businesses were broken into. There's Arabs that were shot and killed in the hood, right? But they still pushed forward, man. They didn't tuck their tails and run. They stayed there. So now the Arabs, like I mentioned earlier, now became a part of that community, although they may live in the suburbs, right? So listen. My fellow Africans, you don't have to hire somebody to run your business. If you have a business, you show your face. You run your own business, man. You put in the work, man, like everybody else have to. You know, it's like I could be at the casino and you have these workers at the casino, these maintenance people, and they just stand around. They come around me and they just stand there and just glare at me like they want to say something, but they don't know how. So y'all got to pay your dues, man. You know, don't hire Arabs to run your business. You run those businesses.